Welcome. It's this is the She Code Africa Contributhon 2022 screenshot updates projects inside Jenkins. Uh, we're grateful that you're here. This is being recorded and it'll be available from community.jenkins.io after the recording has been uploaded to YouTube. So I'm Mark Waite, grateful to have Miracle here with us and Soma as well. Wanted to use this as a chance to talk about how we approach the project. This is a great chance, Miracle and Soma, for you both to ask questions. Don't be shy about if I'm talking, you need to just speak right up and say, but Mark, and, and that's don't be shy at all because otherwise I'll just keep talking and that won't help you nearly as much as if you ask questions. So, so first is we started with, we start with an, an blog post to announce the project and I think it's now visible. Let's check it to see. Nope, not yet. So the caching system still is. Oh, come on, you silly thing. There it is. Okay, so here's the blog post. And, and this blog post talks about each of you. Thanks for sharing your, so Nafisa here, and then Soma here and Miracle here. Thanks very much for sharing your pictures. If these pictures are not the ones you want, let me know and we can fix that. I, I think I got everybody's approval to use those pictures. And so thanks very much for letting us. All right. The project is also listed here under screenshot updates. So when we open that, you'll see this same document that I started sharing. And, and this is where I want to spend most of our time today to talk about this and let you ask questions. We go through various ideas and, hey, how are we going to approach this, et cetera, okay? So I've already, we've already completed the biography and photo piece. Oh, go ahead. No, uh, uh, I wasn't saying anything. Okay, great. All right. So, so the the big picture here is that the Jenkins project is doing a number of user interface improvements. It did several of them in the most recent release in March, and there are even more coming. And and so this. Let's see, so I should put it, I should describe this here. With more changes coming expected in the June 2022 LTS release. And the documentations, the, the screenshots need to be updated to show the current user interface. So the, the Jenkins site has pictures in it in some places and we want to update those screenshots. Now the, I think, and this is one for us to discuss, I think we actually want you to take the pictures, to take the screenshots from the most recent Jenkins release, which is visible as one example here at weekly.ci.jenkins.io and you can install your own to, to see Jenkins, but this is, how it looks right now on the most recent weekly release. Whereas if we look at the release that was just delivered, these are, let's put them both at 200, uh, yeah, 175 is good. So here you see the look is a little different in the older one, the one that I'm showing now compared to the newer one. And I think what we ought to have you do is take screenshots using the most recent weekly release. So what you would do then in these instructions, it, it talks about your task preparation. You install Java, Java, and we would prefer Java 11. And you confirm that you can actually run, and now it's actually this one, I think we actually, oh, these links are wrong. And I think you had told me that, hadn't you? That we need to make this adoptium.net. Yeah. Let me fix that link. And other platforms and versions, we want to see, well, and you'll be able to choose which ones you want. So you want to use Eclipse Temerin.
the old the that other link might work, but Timurin is the the version that we prefer in the Jenkins project. So you go here and you choose Java. Let's see, version eleven. And then what you and your operating system, maybe you're running Windows, and then you would download either the zip file or the MSI and install it on your computer. Now, if you're a 64-bit computer, you can use X64. If you're an older Windows computer, you'd use X32. And by older, I mean probably five years or more old. So most Windows computers now are sold with, win with 64-bit. Any questions so far on that step on getting Java installed? No, no. I already have Java 11 installed. Very good. Excellent. Okay. And I need to update this to show that it should say this version. There. So then the next step is to install Apache Maven. And you may not actually need Apache Maven, but I need to update that text to be 3.5 for this project. For the screenshot updates project, it may not be required, but we'll, we'll have to see. Okay, then, then the other steps can connect to the Contributhon channel on Slack, you've done that. Register for a Jenkins account. So Miracle, I believe we've confirmed that you've done that or that you're in progress. Soma, have you been yes. able to register for a Jenkins account? Soma, you're still, you're, you may be muted. Okay, so you, you, you say you think she may have dropped? Did we lose her? No, uh, maybe network. Ah, okay, that's fine. So we'll continue. We've got a number of things to review here just to be ready. So let's just go ahead and continue. So register for a Jenkins account. And then use the installing Jenkins instructions to install Jenkins. Now, in this case, I think for the two of you, it may be better if you install using the war files technique, because you're going to need to be doing things. You may be having to do more things with this than, than the convenience of using the, the, the Windows install technique. Miracle, are you running on Windows or on Linux or on Mac OS or something different? On Linux. Linux. Oh, okay, good. Then you can use the Linux instructions. If you is your Linux a Debian, Ubuntu, or a Red Hat, or a Fedora, which version is it? Ubuntu. Oh, very good. Okay, then you can just follow these instructions here. All right. Mac, um, I'm using the Mac OS. Can I use the war files, or should I go through the Mac OS version? Either, either is fine. Uh, I don't have experience with Mac OS. I know that the war file technique works, but if you would prefer okay. to try to use the Mac OS installer, you're welcome to do that. Either one works. I would use the weekly rather than the, rather than the, the, the LTS because you're going to need to, to use, see the most recent user interface. Okay. Okay, very good. So that's great okay, that we've got, got one on Mac OS and one on Linux. That, that gives us a, a nice positive benefit. Thanks very much. Now, as you do that installation, you should be sure you install the recommended plugins and then install Jenkins Blue Ocean. And I should probably include a link here to the Jenkins documentation about Blue Ocean so that you you can read about it. Oh, dear, 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 none of those are what I want. Maybe it's here, oh, I know, sub-projects. Hmm. 
it is it used to be there okay so, so i'll just have to go find it hang on Yes, there it is. Good. Okay, so this site will give you an overview of Blue Ocean in case you need to learn more about it. Okay, then I've got some bad instructions here that I need to correct. So this step number six says ensure that you can fork a Jenkins CI plugin repository for the screenshot updates project. We don't want you to fork the Jenkins CI repository. We want you to fork the, the um, documentation repository. So let me I guess update. the link should change too. Yes, so this link is what it means to fork. So this one gives you a tutorial on what the concept is. So that link really doesn't need to change, but maybe what we should do is this, let's, change this thing to just say the word fork so that you know that that's, that's what it's defining. All right. And then and here's, here's the documentation, documentation repository, repository, right? Because yes. that one is where, you, where you're going to do your work. Okay, so the documentation repository is here. Now, do... For each of you, do you have some past experience with GitHub or is this your first time using GitHub? I do have, I have to have a, a little bit of experience with GitHub. Okay, good. So, so I think I did interpret that both of you then have some experience with GitHub. Yes. Yes. Ex excellent, very good, okay. So, all right, and now what, you, what you'll be doing when you do this fork of the documentation repository, you then look at your own. So when I do it, for instance, if I click fork over here in the top right-hand corner and whoops, why did it do that? I say fork and usually it pops up. Fork already exists. There we go. They've changed the UI a little bit. So that's interesting. All right, so, but... If I go to my fork of that, whoops, here we go, my fork. No, really, I meant my fork. Okay, I'll edit the URL like that. This is my fork and you'll see here in the top left-hand corner, it shows what I forked from. So, so this is my copy of it and I'm a little bit out of date. So I'm gonna fetch the upstream, upstream commits and now I'm current. And this is, for you, this will be your working copy. You'll, you'll make your changes in this copy and propose them as pull requests. All right. Now, then these other steps are just to help you become familiar with Jenkins would encourage you to do those steps. Now, then after you've completed those steps, those are good warm-up steps because as you, as you experiment with those things, you'll learn more about it and that will help you be ready to then look at the Jenkins documentation and start identifying places where screenshots need to be updated. So when we actually start the project, the first task is identify outdated screenshots in the documentation and create a list of them. So I think the way we would have you do that is we'll work from a Google sheet listing the URL of the pages, and then we'll sit together and prioritize them. We think we should work on this page and this page. Does that feel comfortable to you as a way of prioritizing those? So we'll first do a collection where we collect the list of pages that, that have images that we think are outdated. Okay, you are saying we, we could 
check for the images, then the outdated images, then um, have them in in a doc in a doc file. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. That, so, is that what you're saying? Yes, that is. So I was going to do an example of that and create this sheet for us together so that we've got the sheet and, and it'll be linked right here in this page so that okay. uh, if, if you're okay that I create the sheet. So we'll just say use the Google yeah, Sheet. Okay. So I think what we should do then is let's go here to Jenkins. She go to Africa Contributhon. All right, and if we look here in projects and screenshot update, so what we need is a new sheet created and shared there. So the two of you should be able to see this sheet. Um, outdated screenshots. And what I would propose we do is call it the page and the URL. And maybe we put, maybe actually here in the middle, because that URL would probably be long, we put priority. And so what we'll do here is page will be the title. Maybe let's just call it that page title. Priority is our way of deciding which things we should work on first. And then URL is the actual location of the page where we have the, the picture that needs to be updated. And so now let's go looking for a, a screenshot that needs to be updated. Actually, and I guess before we do that, could I have the two of you both confirm that you can read this sheet that I just created? So I'm gonna copy, let's see, copy that link and I'm gonna paste it into the chat window here. So Soma and Miracle, could you both confirm that you can open that sheet? All right. Um... So you'll find it in the Zoom chat window. I can also paste mm -hmm. it into Slack. That may help as well, huh? Also pasted it in Slack. All right, I think I have it. Okay, so that was one, good. Okay, I can. Okay, that's two, great, thank you. All right, so now let's go find a page with a picture. And I admit that I'm going to do a little bit of cheating here. And my cheating technique is I'm gonna let GitHub help me find pages with pictures. Oh, that didn't help nearly the way I'd hoped it would. So GitHub will let me search for the word image and yet it didn't find, okay, now I've got to do a, a different search. So this is my local copy of, yeah, and there it is. Okay, so this is my, I cloned this repository locally to my own computer just for my work, for working purposes. And now I could use git grep. And now let's make that text big enough for you to actually read it. So I could, I could have searched the documentation and found these images or, and that's, that's perfectly valid, but I can also use this git grep command looking for the word image colon. And let's look at it without the minus L. And it says things like, oh, guess what? Here are pages that have images in them blog posts and more blog posts. And if we look for the word book, here is a page, here are pages that have references to the, the book. So I can do searches 
using git grep. And if I just do content slash doc, it will limit the searches there. So here are some already some files that have, have images in them for us to, to evaluate. Do we need to change any of these? And so, so this proved to me, yes, there are images here and there are all sorts of places that have images and now we need to go look to see which of those need to be updated. Now, a good choice is, hey, the tutorials probably need to be updated, right? Anything in tutorials is a good choice. So let's, let's look now with git grep minus L. These are just the file names. And we see build a Java app with Maven has a picture in it as does build a Node.js and a Python app. So let's go look at those pages. And, and so does the Hello World app, tour. So those are places where we can go look. So I'm now going to look in tutorials on the Jenkins website. So Jenkins documentation tutorials. And here in the using build tools section is build a Java app with Maven. So when I open that, this hints to me that there's some picture in this and I need to decide, does that picture need to be updated? Ah, here we go. So here's a picture. Here's another picture. And it looks like, oh, and here's another picture and another and another. So there are several pictures here that we would need to follow the steps of this, of this tutorial. So do what it says, hey, do this, do this, do this, and then compare the image when we go to each of these steps and see is the image I see on my screen the same as the picture that's here. Does that seem clear to the two of you and how to approach it? Yes, it does. Um, I'm a bit confused about Go ahead. Um, how you you were able to check check for the the um, files to look for the images since Good. you said. You searched for images on GitHub and you didn't really find what you needed. The other um, the terminal you opened, I don't think I get how you did that. So th very good question. Let's go through those steps together, if that's okay, because this will be a, a good one for you to, to, to understand how that process works from the very beginning. So on your computer, either Linux or Mac OS, you might change to a temporary directory and you might change to someplace where you're going to do work. I'm going to change to a directory named TMP. Mm -hmm. And now we, I could say, if you have GH installed, um, I could just say GH repo clone Jenkins CI slash Jenkins dot, oh no, Jenkins, sorry, it's not here. Let's, let's do it all the way. I'm gonna to go to the Jenkins.io repository. And the way I find that, this is, this is kind of fun actually, the way I find that is I'm down at the bottom of every one of these pages, there is a report or problem link and an improve this page. If I click improve this page, it will take me right to this repository. Now, I don't actually want to improve it. So I'm just gonna take that piece off. Here I am, this is the repository. I'm gonna use the code button over here to copy the URL to the GitHub repository. So I just, again, I click the green code button, I click the, the copy button, and now I have that. And now I can say git clone that. And what it's going to do is clone the repository. And the, this copy of the repository that it's cloned will let me do work. 
one of the things that I can do once this clone is finished is I'll be able to use git grep to search it. So we'll let this keep, keep copying data. So in my directory now, I have a, a folder called Jenkins.io. Here's Jenkins.io. And this is where I can now do searches with git grep. And that tells me all the files that contain the word image followed by the literal colon character. Did, did that set of steps help? Yes, I did. Okay, so, so now git grep has these really nice additional features like I can tell it to look through only a subset. So I'm gonna only look through the docs. So content doc book, here are the, here's the subset. And that found this, oh, look, here's this file that I mentioned. And I could open that file like this and see some of the text in it. Okay, here's this. If you're a doc, Java developer who uses Maven, now in order to find that exact page on Jenkins.io, one easy way to do it is open the page and search for that text. And, and I, okay, I, I entered that, it offered exactly one page and I found it. So just choose some text from the page and search for it and you'll usually find the page immediately. So then down at the bottom of this is, just to be sure I got it, improve this page takes me right to that page in, in the source code. And I could actually make edits right here if I wanted to. Now, I prefer to edit locally because it's easier for me, but the two of you might choose, hey, where's that image colon thing? And here it is. Here's a picture embedded in this, in this documentation. Questions so far? No, no questions. Okay. So then back to the, so we've, we've been through the task. We're trying to do the task of identify screenshots and we've, I think we've found one, right? Because there are probably screenshots on this page that need to be changed. So I'm going to note this and put it into my spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and mute the, the one telephone that joined. I think that may be Nafisa. So Nafisa, you've been muted. I'll unmute you periodically just to double check. So the, the page title that we were using was build a Java app with Maven. So I've entered the title. I don't know a priority, so I'm gonna leave that blank for now. And we've got the URL to the page. So now we could do the same thing with other pages there. And the idea is let's find those places. For instance, this tutorial for installing Jenkins on AWS. Oh, that one maybe may have important things to fix. And so again, I'm going to search for it you will launch an EC2 instance. I'm gonna search for that text. So searching for that text, you will launch an EC2 instance. So here it is. And we scan through this page. Okay, that's an AWS screenshot. So that's probably not changed by Jenkins. This is an AWS screenshot, more AWS, more, more, more. Okay, these are all AWS pictures, so nothing here yet to change. Install Jenkins using Putty, that's nothing we need to change. 
Okay, here's a Jenkins screenshot. This one we'll probably find is not going to change, but, and, and this one, however, might. So we've just identified another page that needs to go in our list of screenshots to be considered. Any questions on that step? No. No, no questions. Great. Okay. And, and we just keep going through that so the two of you can work through that exercise. Part of this will also help familiarize you with the Jenkins documentation. So you get a little chance to read the documentation, see what it says and explore it. So this is, this is the relatively easier step of let's go find all the things that need to be updated. After doing that, then it's time to switch to the next task, which is, is certainly going to take us more, more challenge will be, we decide how to divide the work between us. And maybe what we should say is, uh, prioritize the pages in combination with Mark Waite and Nafisa. Um, so that we work on highest priority pages first. And so in this case, we might enter, okay, I think the tutorial is priority one and the Jenkins on AWS is priority 30. So we would tend to work on one before 30. Now that may not be our ultimate prioritization, but that's, that's what I do. All right. Okay. Matt, oh. I do have one question. Yes, please. Okay, so um, when we're identifying the screenshots that need to be updated, is it just on the tutorials? No, no, no. It's anywhere in the documentation. So let's let's look at some others. So for instance, here there's a, a security page that has an image in it. So it's developer documentation with us, something in it. And, and so we may need to look at that page and decide should, will it need to be updated? So if I search for that text, this is a, an image there. Oh, thankfully, this image probably does not need to be updated because it's not related to the Jenkins UI. But we have to look at all the pages, at least all the pages in content slash doc. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. I understand now. Okay. Let's see, we've got a lot of background noise. I'm going to double check. Participants. Ah, okay, got it. Background noise has stopped. Okay, thanks. So as another example, we've got the using documentation here. So doc book using search box. And here, every page in Jenkins has a search box in its top right. So if I search for that, there's the page. And this image certainly will need to be done again, in part because it's very difficult to read. So, and because it's, it's wrong. This image is in fact, this thing that says enable auto free refresh no longer exists, hasn't existed for years. So, so this page definitely needs an update. So we, we would put this page in the list as well. And the page title is search box. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so reasonably comfortable with this process, the process of collecting the, the places where the images are used? Yes. Okay, then, then the next step, we'll prioritize, and then we're actually gonna start doing the work. And this is where the doing the work, what I would assume you'll do is, We'll put another column in here. Um, owner. And maybe we would say, okay, for this one, we're going to put, how about we said, we're going to put Miracle for the first and Soma for the second. And that may not be what we ultimately do, but the idea was miracle, you would take some and Soma would take some. And you put your name in there and say, I'm doing this one, I'm doing this one. And then you would go to work on actually sim creating the same situation that was done for this image and taking the screenshot and proposing it as a, as a replacement. So that I think is the more complicated task. And this is the place where your skills will, will really come in. So for instance, let's take this one. Here is the unlock Jenkins page screen. This was the first image we saw. And, and what you'll do is you'll, you're going to see, oh, I need to run that first image. So I am going to run Jenkins locally. And so in my case, I need to I need to have a local copy of Jenkins. So I am going to I'm going to download a copy of Jenkins. Now I'm going to cheat a little because you will you will go here to download it. You'll just click the download and you'll choose the weekly release over here and you'll download it. And maybe mine's fast enough to do that. Oh yeah, that's not bad. So in my downloads folder, here we see, Sorry, I have to show you this. There, downloads folder, there's Jenkins.war. And the Jenkins war file is the thing that I'm going to run. So I'm going to, in my command window or on your Mac, you would do it from a terminal and on Linux from a terminal. I'm gonna to change to the downloads directory and say Java minus Java, let's see, Java minus minus version first. Yeah, I'm running Java 11, Java minus jar, Jenkins.war. And now it's going to run Jenkins for me locally and I will try to get that same page that is shown on the UI. Edit, copy. Okay, so remembering that the page was right where it was. How, oh, this, okay, here's the page I was trying to get, the unlock Jenkins page and getting started. So when I open, localhost port 8080, There's that page. Now I need to get a screenshot of that. And, and let's first look, is this any different than what's in the documentation? The documentation looks like this. This page, that's pretty much the same, isn't it? Does that look very different to the two of you? I don't see much difference there. So I'm going to say that doesn't need to be changed. Does that seem okay to the two of you? Yes, it looks 
page it should be seen okay so not going to waste the time to create an updated screenshot for that but i think i'm going to need other things later so i'm going to continue here and now let's keep going through these others so display the console stopping and restarting okay now here's one where it says during the during this creation of this demo application this screenshot may need to be visited and in order to do that i have to do an awful lot of steps in the tutorial i'm going to start those steps now and i would do those steps go through them and try to get to this point to see if this screenshot needs to be updated I happen to know that this one doesn't need to be updated. And as we continue through, I think the rest of these on this page don't need updates either. So I think we've confirmed that this one did not need any change. So I would make a note over here, no change needed. UI is the same in weekly as screenshots. So that would complete the first task. And now we go looking for others. So maybe we're gonna say, Miracle is going to take the search box as the next task. So back here, this, oh, this is still running. So it's gonna be a little bit. But what I do is try to get to the same location as this describes this search box. Every page in Jenkins has a search box that lets you search box that lets you get to your destination quickly. So let's go see here. I have to answer. Oh dear, I typed wrong. Okay, and it says I'm ready to use it. Here's that search box. Now look how different this picture of the search box is. That one compared to this one, look in this top right hand corner. Do you see how different that search box is compared to this, compared to this picture? Yes. So we need a new screenshot of that search box. And I've been taking a technique, I have Google Chrome and I installed a tool called Go Full Page that lets me take screenshots of web pages. You might want to do that if you'd like. So let me make a note in our document here that you could consider that it's free. I actually pay them a little extra so that I can get some features in it, but it's free for your use. So if we go here, Mark captures his screenshot in Google Chrome with go full page. So if you if you want to try the same thing, you're welcome to do it. Um, let me see if I can find the link to that. There we go. And there are certainly plenty of other ways to do screenshots of web pages, right? This is only one suggestion that you might consider. You're welcome to do whatever works for you to get the screenshots captured. I'm going to actually use this captured screenshot and I'm gonna do some editing on my copy because it makes it easy for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop this image. Oh, except you know what? It took away my username there and that's not the right size. So I made a mistake. I need to do this, this, this screenshot again. That is too small of a picture because I want the user's name to be visible there as well. 
So let's fix my mistake by using a wider screenshot like that. Yeah, that's a good choice. So now back to go full page. And I'm now going to edit. Now, again, you don't have to use go full page. You could use whatever technique you'd like to capture a screenshot. I happen to like go full page because it's right inside my web browser and easy. Does it, does it save them on the page? On the Sorry, I didn't hear you. Could you ask that question again? Can you hear me now? I can, yes, go ahead. Okay, I was asking, does does go full page save them on the browser or it, is, is still in your computer? It will it will actually I will have to save it to my computer. So right now I'm editing it editing it on inside my browser. So when I say done cropping. When I say download and export, download PNG, it will download the picture to my local file system. And here it is locally on my computer. So now I have it locally. Did that answer your question? So did that answer? Yes, it did. So now the challenge is, I've got a local screenshot here, but it's got a, a name that isn't the right file name. I need to give it the correct file name so that I can upload it to, to the, to, as a pull request to the, to the repository. And the way I do that is I've got to go find that file name. So, okay, so here we have this and one way to find the file name of the image is to view the page source. And if we look here for the image tag, uh, image, come on, where is image? Oh, it's, is it IMG? No, oh, it's SVG. Interesting. No, I'm looking for an image. Where would it be? Okay. Partial drop down, drop down. Where's all of our text? Keep going. Okay. Search box is, oh, here we go. IMG is the thing I was looking for. Okay. So And so what this says is the file that is associated with this is in a directory named double dot slash double dot slash resources using search box.png. So I really want to name this file box.png. And now I need to get that file into a place where I can use it to, some, to, to make a change to that file in my development environment. In my case, it's easy for me if I do it this way. Let's get a... So I'm gonna copy it from my develop, my Windows computer where I usually sit to the place where I do my, my documentation development. And you won't have to do this because you'll do documentation development on your local computer. In my case, I do my documentation development on a Linux computer. Okay, so now, I wanna find box.png and there it is. Content, doc, book, resources using search box.png. So I did that with this get ls files command because it makes it easy to search the list of all files. Now the file that I uploaded, I put in my home directory. So I'm just going to do a move that file into this location. 
Now, when I say get status, it's going to tell me one file has been changed. That's my new updated file. And that's the thing I want to include in a pull request. Now, in my case, I have some things that I like to use to optimize images. I wonder if we ought to have the two of you also do run image optimization. What do you think? Would you be willing to add a, an additional step here in our instructions to optimize the images? Yeah, that would be okay. Okay, so I use this script and I'm just going to bring it up here. I, it's been a long time since I did anything with this. Oh, yes, here we go. I use this right here. That's an awful lot. Let me just paste that somewhere. I'm going to I'm going to paste that entire thing, or I'll, I'll provide it to you separately because this has some convenience things in it which make it much easier. It, it uses the PNG crush program to make the, uses a script that runs the PNG crush program. So if you're okay with that, I'll just put it at the end of this document on a new page. And then you can decide if you want to copy that script onto your local computer or do something else with it. Here we go, just a minute. That is an awful lot of script, isn't it? Wow. And we want it in a career new and make it maybe nine point. You're both being very patient as I do this kind of thing. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so, so there's the script that I use in case it helps you. Okay, so I have a question. Do we just copy and paste the script into a terminal? Yeah, into, into any file on your computer where you can run it. So Mark, Place has the script on his computer in a file optimize optimize.sh and runs it with the command. And you could do it however works best for you, but this is this is how I do it. Did did that address your question? Okay, so once we have the once we have the the scripts pasted, the images will be optimized. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Right. So by running this script. What it did was it, it looked at the file, at this file and said, 
oh, hey, here's a way I can improve this file. So if I, if I were to do a comparison, let's copy that other file up again. The file after optimization and before. So after optimization, it's 2,800 bytes. Before it was 5,000 bytes. So we saved almost half the size of the file by running the optimizer. Oh. Okay. And, and by doing that, that also improves the, the Google page rank algorithm because Google gives better page ranks to pages that are using optimized images instead of non-optimized images. So by op you're optimizing the images, you're also helping us achieve better Google page rank on our documentation pages. All right. So I, I apologize that I've gone on and on and on here. We need to check to see what are you, I think we should plan to meet again for further discussion after you've had some time to do the startup tasks. Would you like to meet later this week? Would you like to meet early next week? Um, but for me, okay, early next week is okay, too. Well, and if, if early next week works great for you, that's great for me. If you need later this week or two or three days into the project, you find that, hey, you'd like to meet sooner, just ask in Slack and I can do a, a separate session as needed. So oh, if you're okay with us planning to meet next week at the same time, I'll put a, a calendar item on the agenda, invite you all, and we'll do this, this kind of thing again. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Hello. Nafisa. Yeah, um, I thought this is supposed to be a weekly thing, isn't it? It, it, it can be, absolutely. I would like it to be a weekly thing. I, I, I don't know if that's working with Miracle and Soma. If should we make it a weekly thing? So uh, I think that will be easier. I'm, I may need less than a week though. So as we go, then- You can, yes, you can always ask questions on Slack in case you need guidance. But when we want to have full meetings like this, I'm suggesting we have it the same time, same day, every week. If that's okay with you uh, too, actually. Yeah, that, well, that would be okay. That would be okay. But if we need meetings, um, more meetings as we go on. Yes, project, you can always request. Make... Yes, you can always yeah. request. Okay, Absolutely. Okay, so so would be happy to meet with you Wednesday or Thursday, even Friday. If, if any of those help you, happy to help because in this early startup phase, you may very quickly go through the, the steps and realize, oh, I need more help. Then let's, let's do a, a quick call, we'll record it. That way it's available for anybody who wants to see it and they can, they can you'll, you'll get what you need and others will get help as well. All right. Okay, that would be perfect. Thank you. Great. And I apologize, I have to end because I've got to, I've, I've run over and I've got to get to a work, work meeting, but thank you. I'll make the recording available and I'll post a link to the recording page on our, on, on Slack and on community.jenkins.io. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, and Nafisa, was this meeting time yes. okay for you? We're, we're still yes, within. Yes, yes. All it's right. Perfectly okay. So we'll talk to each other for sure in Slack and we'll, right. we'll exchange messages there and then we will meet again next week. Thanks everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.